Hello everyone and welcome to the Upside Down Readathon Day 1. I cannot believe this is here already. I cannot believe it is already September 5th. Where did the summer go? I feel like it was just yesterday we were planning this readathon and now it's officially here. Today is also Kendall's birthday, so when you see this tomorrow, don't forget to go subscribe to her and say happy birthday to her because she deserves the world. She's the brainchild behind this whole readathon. If you don't know anything about what the heck this readathon is or like why am I here, if you missed my announcement video, you can go back and I put that out I think at the beginning of August where there's all the details. Yes, I'm going to be attempting to daily vlog. Emphasis on the attempting because I have only daily vlogged one other time in my life. That was two years ago. I'm not guaranteeing anyone anything at this point but I think it will be super fun especially because today is Labor Day so I have this whole day off just to read and relax and hang out with you guys and not to mention if it looks super dark behind me, I don't know if you can tell, but it is actually an extremely dark rainy day. There is like flood warnings in our area, so it's probably going to be a little bit more of like a cozy vibe vlog today, which is honestly perfect for what we're doing today, which I will get to in a second. But yeah, today is day one of the Upside Down Readathon, and I had to mention we are in the Stranger Things mood in Stranger Things mode already because I need to get all the 80s vibes today. I think I may watch an episode, we may eat some breakfast here with some Eggos in a few minutes, but before we get into all of that, I'm gonna run through really quick what the plans are for reading this week because that's probably why you're here. I am just so excited about this TBR. I have not been this excited for books probably in a long time, which could be because I was actually in a reading slump the whole month of August with moving. Things were just kind of crazy and you can probably tell behind me not all my shelves are full yet. I literally just keep some books on the shelves for filming. Just ignore that. But anyways, I feel like this week is just going to be my week for reading. Hopefully I can knock out all five books. I'm very confident I will, but again, I don't remember what daily vlogging is like. So first of all, this is a pretty highly anticipated graphic novel for me. I'm going to be reading this for the prompt of lights on the cover as a nod to season one, but this is called Source Line and it's just a fantasy middle grade graphic novel. It's very short. It's only like 100 pages. The artwork is absolutely stunning. I don't know much about it. I just know this girl is like obsessed with fantastical creatures, I think, and there's like a mystery involved. I do know this is a series, which is also super cool. So I am very excited to get to this one, but I probably won't be reading it until maybe Wednesday or Thursday. If I'm feeling a little bit slumpy and just need something different to look at, you guys know I always like including graphic novels in my readathons. And our next prompt for season two, which is a nod to the mind flare, is to read a psychological thriller, which I decided to pick up Sundial by Katrina Ward. You guys may or may not have seen my reaction to the end of House on Needless Street, but I really enjoy this author's writing. It was chaotic. It was amazing. There was just so much that goes into her books, and I know this one is going to be very different, so I don't know if I'm going to like it as much, but I also wanted to pick this because it's just shy of 300 pages, so it is going to be a little bit easier to get through, but I don't know much about this. I just know it's about a single mom and she takes her daughter back to the town where she grew up and the little girl is very odd. She's obsessed with bones and the mom is concerned about that. So I think they try to escape this town, they get stuck. I really have no clue. But it also has multiple points of view, which is actually the next prompt. So if I wanted to double up on prompts or something, I am probably gonna be prioritizing this one just to say that I've like fulfilled all of the prompts. It is raining 
so hard now so hopefully you don't mind a little bit of rain asmr but for my actual book i'm going to read for multiple points of view is a cosmology of monsters by sean hamill i think is how you pronounce his name i'm not really sure but this has been on my radar since last year when desi from darling desi started talking about this i am just super excited to see what this is about I think this is just about a family that owns like a haunted attraction, but they're also dealing with their own internal monsters. I've heard it's actually pretty horrific, but I don't know like on the scale or the level or what we're looking at for this one. This is actually going to be my only physical book this week. The others I have audiobooks to. I've heard nothing but good things, but honestly I haven't heard many things. So I'm a little bit scared, but I feel like this is just the perfect Stranger Things vibe which is what I'm going for most of my TBR. And the next prompt is to read a book with a game or competition. And I do not want to hear some of you come after me because in my September TBR video, I had you guys vote between these two. First of all, I have an audiobook for this one and it's shorter. I do not do well with fantasy on audiobook. So I think the majority vote was for Caraval, but I am not going to be reading that this week. So don't come at me. But I feel like overall this one is just going to be way easier to get through, especially on audiobook. I think I'm going to deem this as like my commute book for the week and listening to it at work because I feel like these other ones are just going to be really spooky and scary and I just want to be fully invested in them. I do not know much about this one other than it's like Knives Out but young adult. So I guess we will see what happens. I have had this on my shelf since the day it came out. I was so excited about it. Kind of lost interest, obviously, because I haven't read it yet, but I'm also very excited to get into this one. And then, of course, we have Read a Hose of Buddy Read that's based on your favorite character, which mine is Eleven, and I'm going to be reading When the Sky Fell on Splendor. So if you are Team Eleven and you're going to be reading this with me, definitely drop a comment below. I would love to know, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. I started this yesterday and I am about 40% of the way through because like I said with daily vlogging I don't know what's gonna happen and I really want to chat with you guys about this one. A lot of people actually didn't know Emily Henry had written Young Adult before she's been writing all these adult romances which I think is really funny because this has been on my radar for a while because I read A Million Junes first and adored it and I really wish she would go back to this genre but that's okay. I just thought it was funny like a lot of people didn't realize that. I am loving this one. It is literally perfect for the character of Eleven because in this one we have our main character girl who possibly might be possessed by an alien because her friends love to investigate local ghost stories and they have this YouTube channel where they kind of make up stories and film and they get made fun of so much for doing it because it's really bad, people don't like it. But then one night while they're out like looking for ghosts, they encounter like this bright light and they catch something on the camera that looks really suspicious, like alien activity. I will talk more about this when I'm actually finished, but I am pleasantly surprised with how much I'm enjoying it. The banter between the characters is absolutely Emily Henry. So I am just loving that aspect of it. And last, but definitely not least, yes, I said there's five reading prompts but if I finish all of those, I am going to be reading The Saturday Night Ghost Club because I almost chose this for Lights on the Cover. It's very short, but I bought this book because I've heard it's major Stranger Things vibes. It's about these group of kids and this girl. I think something's going on with her. I do know this is like a young adult coming of age story, so I'm not sure how many like sci-fi elements will be weaved into this story, but I bought this for this readathon and I feel like I need to read it. It's also Lauren's book for Team Steve, and I just have been super intrigued about this one. So this is like my bonus book if I can get to it at all this week. So there you have it, my Stranger Things TBR for this week, which again, I am very nervous, but we're halfway through one book, so I think it is manageable. We also have reading sprints tonight, which will hopefully 
great jumpstart the week for a lot of us for our reading. But for now, the only plans today is I thought it would be super fun to create a cozy reading nook for the week. So somewhere I can just go and cozy up and be motivated to read, not as distracted. And if you guys saw my moving vlog, the closet that I have in this office area is actually fairly big and there's a window. I thought it would be super fun to just gather up a bunch of pillows and blankets, candles, lights, a bunch of just cozy items and cozy things and just throw them in the closet and make like a cozy reading nook. I will show you guys now the before of what we're working with, but before we get to all that, I need to get breakfast and some coffee. I need some fuel. I'm used to energy drinks, but we're out of energy drinks, so I may have to like run to the store at some point this week, but my stomach is absolutely just growling. So I think in honor of Eleven, we may just have to make some waffles today because that's kind of what I'm feeling. It's go time with the reading because I think for today, I really want to focus on finishing this, but I'm either going to focus on this because like I said, it's my only physical book or start into this one because I do want to physically read this one. I can't decide which one I want to start with. Maybe I will take like a poll on Instagram or something. We'll see what happens. When I have an update for you next, I will let you know which one I decide. But for now, let's just go ahead and get some food, get some fuel, and get started on our little nook. All right, friends, so this is what we're working with. <laughs> this is kind of a wreck. These are all the books that, um, that need to go on my shelves or are supposed to be on my shelves right now. But you know, moving is a process. So I'm hoping these are all like my unhaul books. We're gonna clear most of the floor space out and that's just like camera equipment, suitcase. Up here, I think I'm gonna have to move all of this stuff to this side so that way we can just focus on like this wall in this corner in this area. And then, yeah, like I said, there's a really cute window so we can put some candles maybe up here, but yeah, that's pretty much the plan. I just thought it would be fun to have a little bit of a space to just kind of hang out and I can shut the door <laughs> if I really need to. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get to work. Yeah, I can read the signs You need to get away It's time we make a change Oh, you know you'll always have me Baby, I will always stay with you So put your trust in me We'll work it out, you'll see Someplace far, yeah, we could go for a ride. The two of us, we don't have to stop. Baby, let's go for a ride. You and I, let us run away. We can go where we want. I'll have your back if you'll have mine.
my cozy reading nook. <laughs> this was so much fun. It didn't take any time at all. I just gathered all my blankets, all my mismatched pillows, and my TBR, and these flameless candles are seriously amazing. I have like four of them, but I want like a million for my shelves in the fall because they are so cute and great and obviously you can put them anywhere. I have some plants up here and some plants over here because anything green makes me super happy. I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit toasty in here, but that's okay. I have an AC vent above me so we'll just blast that. But anyways, here's my reading nook and here is where I probably will be spending most of my week. Now that I have this set up, I feel like I can finally focus and read. So I have actually not read anything today and it is now noon. So we should probably get on that, but yeah, this is where I'll be for the rest of the afternoon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little montage of me <laughs> setting things up, but I will catch up with you later when hopefully I am finished with my Emily Henry book. my first book of the readathon and once again I did get a 40% jump on this book but I'm honestly just so shocked I even finished a book in the first day because let me tell you the cloudy weather had me wanting to take a nap like a million times or just have like a movie day but we stuck with it, we pushed through, and I'm so happy I did because I just feel very accomplished. Now I feel super confident going into the readathon, which probably by like day four and five, I will plummet. So don't expect me to finish a book every single day. So this book, I do not know how to rate it. It definitely didn't feel like Emily Henry at all, other than some of the banter between some of the characters. And the plot wasn't very detailed. I didn't hate it, but it also, like, I don't know. I had a hard time visualizing what was happening, and I honestly just don't think maybe the vibes were for me. It's like Stranger Things, but not as good. I don't really know how to rate this. I feel like it's a three, like a middle ground, but it's probably my least favorite that I've read of hers. There is definitely Stranger Things vibes in this book. You get like a Christmas lights scene where all of the kids are in Walmart like turning on all these lights and they talk about Christmas lights. There are riding bikes and like a creepy like mysterious old man and there's definitely those vibes there but I honestly just wanted more of those vibes I think and while this wasn't a bad book I just didn't get as connected to the characters like I wanted to. This does explore hard topics like grief that I wasn't necessarily expecting. I didn't dislike, but it was very heavy on some of those topics. Overall, it's hard to describe this book without spoiling anything, but there is hardcore 11 vibes in this. There's a girl that ends up getting superpowers, and it's just very Stranger Things. I just wanted more of those vibes. Not the strongest start, but not the worst start. So like I said, I feel like I'm gonna rate this like 
somewhere in the middle and probably is my least favorite of hers which I was hoping I would like it a little bit better than a million Junes but that's okay. So I'm actually going to be ending this vlog a little bit early. I got some dinner, it's now 6.15 and we actually have sprints at 8 which means I need to edit this vlog and get it scheduled for tomorrow and on sprints tonight I am planning to start sundial next i would love to knock out another book this one is very shy yeah very shy of 300 pages so i don't think i'll have a problem getting through it in the next day or two i am very scared to read this one because i know it's a little bit more horror than what i'm used to but stay tuned we will see how this one goes i honestly have no clue if the next time you see me will be Wednesday or if I'm gonna end up combining like three of my work days because they're just so similar. I have zero expectations going into this so until then I will see you guys around in the upside down for my next Stranger Things vlog. Mm -hmm.